So first questions in front of your screen, right? Today is the mock test and try to check your score at the end of the day. So you get to know how much, uh, I mean, uh, you are doing well. So first question is a 40 years old female with no significant past medical history present with a nausea, vomiting, upper abdominal pain, jaundice for past 12 hours. On examination, she is afebrile and jaundiced with right upper quadrant or right upper abdominal pain, uh, right upper quadrant tenderness to palpation. Lab shows ALP 923, which is much very much high. It's supposed to be in the range of 40 to 50. AST is 9900. It is again in range of 40 to 50s. ALT and WBC 6.5. On imaging right upper quadrant, ultrasound shows dilated common bile duct. Right. What would be the best options amongst below uh, this uh, options given? Right. Or the what is the best appropriate management? That is the question. So uh, is it ERCP? Is it MRCP? It is ultrasound of abdomen and it is upper GI endoscopy means gastrointestinal endoscopy. Yeah, so you just, uh, I mean, give me your answer and uh, do let me know. Yes, Dr. Rustam, any idea? Dr. Rustam, let's unmute your mic and we'll discuss. We'll discuss excellent questions today. So, just unmute your mic and you can speak up. Dr. Samin? Dr. Samin, what's your answer? If you interact, I would be glad. I mean, don't worry about right or wrong. Everybody is learning here. If nobody is expert, don't worry. So, it's a learning platform. So, you can speak up. Preeti? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, I think it is a bile duct stone has been uh, uh, impacted over the common bile duct. So, that is causing a dilatation over there. It's looking like a cholangitis, sir. Uh, pain, jaundice, and uh, tenderness. Uh, that should be causing the uh, stone has been obstructed. So, ALP, AC, everything has been increased. Fine. So, we can do an uh, ERCP so we can remove the stone and uh, keep the stent. Fine. So, again, let's come to the basic things. In any MCQ for newcomers, you must know the diagnosis. So, I need to get the diagnosis, Dr. Preeti, of this patient. So, first tell me what is the diagnosis of this patient? Uh, cholangitis, sir. Okay. So, I'll, we will discuss cholangitis. So, so do you think cholangitis required fever and high count, yes or no? Uh, yes, sir. It's inflammation. Fine. So, do you feel that there is a fever or high WBC count? By my sense, is it 6,500, 6 6.5? Uh, no, sir. Right? It's not. It is a 6,500. It is a normal WBC no, count. Normal. Is it's there any, normal. any history of the fever? Because they are mentioning patient is afebrile. So, fever is not no there. Fever. No, yeah. sir. So, I, so, cholangitis is almost gone, right? Cholangitis, right? So, go on. So, what could be the other differential diagnosis by your sense? This is how we have. Everyone has to differentiate. You don't need to mug up the answer. Otherwise, it's useless. Right? So, you have to understand. So, she told, uh, right? This is just discussion. Na? So, Preeti told cholangitis. So, I, I debated with her. Is it fever is there in cholangitis? Because in cholangitis, fever is there. There is no fever. When there is infection, inflammation, WBC is high. There is no WBC high. So, what else it could be, Dr. Preeti? What else could it could be? You are right. You are going right, but you are a little confused, right? So, if cholangitis is not there, what other things can make such a same picture? Anyone? Uh, impacted by a stone, sir. Yeah, that's correct. That is the answer. Impacted stone. So, basically, stone in the CBD. So, is there any terminology for it? Is there any terminology if if you want to tell your patient? Polylithiasis. You, polylithiasis. Uh, sorry, sorry. I, I'm not getting that word properly. So I'm just... Uh, Fair, enough. Fair enough. I'm happy. At least you are interacting with me. So this is what the learning platform. If we know uh, everything, then no need to have this. Polydocolithiasis. So this is again, see the third word. Polydoco. Polydoco. 
So what is the difference between polylithiasis and polydocolithiasis? Anyone? Sir, polylithiasis you... is the uh, inflammation of uh, no stone in uh, gallbladder, and polydocolithiasis is the in CBD. Excellent. So, Doctor Manpreet is a brilliant man. So, gallbladder stone, right? It is called as a polylithiasis. Poly means cyst, right? Or gallbladder, right? And a polydoco, polydocal cyst, right? So, this is poly. Lithiasis and there is cholidocolithiasis. So don't get confused. It's a little complex term, but it's very important. So at least we reach up to the diagnosis at the end of the day, Preeti, right? That what is a diagnosis? So diagnosis is what I write down the final diagnosis of this patient, Preeti. Preeti, are you with me or not? Yes or no? So, so, so this is cholidocolithiasis. Looks like a stone in the common bile duct. If it is in a gallbladder, it is cholelithiasis, right? How you investigate? Preeti, are you there with me in the discussion? Sir, I am here, sir. I am here, sir. At least reply, please. I will be happy. I guess the first one... First, do an ultrasound and uh, or otherwise, uh, if uh, we get into gastroenterology, they do a MRCP uh, to confirm uh, whether the stone is impacted or not. And then they will go for the ERCP to remove the stone. Already here, everything has been elevated. Uh, uh, second order is ultrasound, MRCP and ERCP, sir, and uh, to remove the stone. Wonderful. So, first of all, this is cholidocolithiasis. Are you agreed with this? Yes or no? First of yes, all, sir. diagnosis. We yes. are not in hurry. We'll understand yes, each and every line, then I'll go to the next session, right? And I wish the same, you reciprocate the same thing, right? Yes, sir. Second is the investigation. So if if you if you are suspecting clinically, how you start? What is your initial? No? Directly, you will not jump on the uh, yeah, ERCP, yeah. MRCP, yes, blah, blah, right? What would be the go, most Go ahead with the I'm ultrasound abdomen. abdomen. Ultrasound of the abdomen. In ultrasound of the abdomen, you are not getting much deep details or you are not yes, confirmed sir. or you cannot see some stones in the common bile duct or you your picture is not clear right yes sir then what else yeah. you will do what would be the next step after MRCP. ultrasound mrcp what is the yes. full form of mrcp uh magnet resonance uh computer I will discuss hold the question with you with next candidate second question. So you need to know, no? What do you think? Yes, sir. You don't need to know the full form of MRCP. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Magnet so MR means uh, magnetic resonance. Excellent. So cholangio pancreatography. Cholangio means common bile duct and pancreatography means cholangio common bile duct and pancreatic duct. Today yes, I sir. included lots of pictures in today's session to make it more clarity on the session. So MRCP. So MRCP, once you done and you do, right? So after yes, MRCP, you found that there is a stone in the common bile duct. Then what will you do? Uh, mm. Then go uh, go ahead with the ERCP and remove it, sir. Uh, Intrograde uh, uh, cholangiopancreatic. Endoscopic and retrograde uh, cholangiopancreatography. What do you mean by retrograde? Uh, how are we done? ERCP. Let it finish first, Preeti. Then we'll discuss with another guy as well, just to make it continue. Yes. So what what is the ERCP? What they exactly do the ERCP? Uh, so they, they go ahead with the uh, till the bile duct and they find the stone and uh, uh, pick the stone, uh, remove the stone, and uh, even it will go till the, the uh, pancreatic. So see see the bile. So they enter one scope by... from the mouth. They enter the uh, scope from the mouth. Yes, sir. You doubt or you know? Yes, or you yes no, no, I know, sir. It's through the mouth only. Okay, so yeah, they entered the scope from the mouth and, and yes. the tip of the scope goes up to where, at which level? Uh, till the uh, pancreas, sir. Till the uh, ampule of vita. Okay, so ampule, uh, I mean, pancreas cannot be seen on endoscope. So, till uh, ampule of water. Okay, fine. So, ampule of water is situated where? Which part? Uh, of uh, second part of the odinum, sir. Second part of duodenum. So scope can go up to the second part of duodenum, and after second yes. part of duodenum, it reach. Then what it do? Uh, 
if we find uh, it any stones is there or so, uh, we, we can uh, we the, confirm the... with the sonography we confirm with the mrct stone yes, is there sir. then what you need to do uh, uh, pick up the stone remove the stone mm -hmm. And uh, okay. stain placement uh, can be done with the same procedure. Okay, fine. So now, now this is what concluded. The diagnosis is concluded, right? Investigation, yes, we did it, and treatment. So best management for this patient is what? What's the answer? What is the best management for this patient? What's the answer in ABC? ERCP. E e ERCP. So why you don't yes, want sir. to do MRCP then? Why answer is not MRCP? Why not MRCP? Uh, what because is the difference between ERCP and MRCP? Uh, so ERCP mm -hmm. is not an invasive procedure. Yeah, but uh, yeah, sorry, MRCP is not an invasive procedure. ERCP is an invasive procedure. It can be a treatment option on ERCP. Uh, we can do a, it is like a therapeutic uh, can be done both. Mm -hmm. uh, MRCP is not a therapeutic. Excellent. Excellent. This is what I want to hear. Right, so let me. Uh, probably you have not done any exercise for this PowerPoint presentation, but I did a lot of hard work in last two days to prepare this PowerPoint presentation. So I will guide my level base to you guys because I want to con clear the concept. I don't want to mug up the things, right? So a lot of things we done, right? Learn today, right? Polylithiasis and polydocolithiasis, one thing, right? Many people are confused between these two things, right? So don't get confused in the exam as well. Right, so this is one thing. Uh, let me uh, give you first the difference between this. So this is excellent schematic presentation, right? So just concentrate, right? I tried my many hours to compile this thing, so it would be just a spoon feeding for you. MRCP, MR means magnetic resonant pol polangiopancreatography, and ERCP is endoscopic mm -hmm. retrograde mm -hmm. polangiopancreatography. So CP is same for both polangiopancreatography, polangiopancreatography. This is MRI based. So it is called shortly MR. This is endoscope means we are entering one tube endoscopic polangiopancreatography, right? So MRCP is done from outside, right? You don't need anything to enter into the body. So it is non-invasive. It is invasive. Why? Because you are entering the scope inside the mouth, oral cavity, esophagus, stomach and reaching up to the second part of duodenum. I'll explain everything. This is just for the diagnosis. So if you take a picture, if you take an MRI, you know that there is a uh, there is a stone in the common bile duct. You just know. But you can't do. You are helpless. With MRI, you can't remove the stone. Here the dual advantage. Here what? It is diagnostic. Right? Why? Because you are entering the scope from here. This is second part of duodenum. I have another excellent picture. So what? This is the mouth. So from the mouth, right? This is esophagus. This is stomach. Right? This is duodenum. And then this is the second, second part of duodenum. So entered the scope from the mouth. It goes into the esophagus, stomach, second part of duodenum. They entered and they remove the, the, the stone. Right? So this is ampulla of water basically. This is terminal part is ampulla of water. So they are sometimes called sphincteric tommy. Have you heard pretty sphincteric tommy? So they are just ah yes sir the yes sir. Sphincteric tommy will be done sir correct. Yeah so they cannot be removed right with simply easily. So they do sometimes sphincteric tommy. Enter the scope and remove the things right. So it has dual. Sir, e they can sir, e one second. E let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Yes yes. So you can directly yes. visualize the stone as well. So it is a diagnostic. Right, so your diagnosis is done, okay? Because why you see directly the visualization of the stone, so diagnosis is done. MRI is doing the same thing, but MRI limitation is MRI cannot enter the scope. You just taking a picture, so it's a diagnostic. Try to understand the logic and basic. Here the diagnostic, why? Because you directly visualize and therapeutic. How therapeutic? Problem is polydocolithiasis, so you want to remove because patient has a pain, patient has a jaundice, patient has altered liver function, patient has a palpation tenderness, right? Because of this is obstructed, all the bile is there. So it is distended. Gallbladder is distended. And that is why you have a pain. You have palpable gallbladder. Right? So blah, blah. These are the things. Right? So you need to understand the basic. Right? So this is excellent picture. I uh, got it from NET. Right? So this is diagnostic. This is diagnostic as well as therapeutic. No risk of ionization. No post-procedure complication. Because MRI, you just take a picture. There is no complication. But here... The chances of complications are there because you are entering something right from here. So there are two things, right? And this is pancreatic duct. So this is this is your right hepatic duct, left hepatic duct. Both are common. That is why oh it is my. called common hepatic duct. 
this is gall bladder and from gall bladder this yellow color is cystic a cystic duct. duct right so cystic duct and common hepatic duct will form together common cystic hepatic duct. duct this common hepatic duct uh, sorry common bile common duct, bile right? duct. this is common yeah cbd right this is all from the right lobe of liver this is liver here just for your understanding right so right lobe of liver right hepatic duct left hepatic duct common hepatic duct cystic duct will join and this is called common bile duct this common bile duct eventually join with the pancreatic duct why because this is pancreas simple this is pancreas here right so this pancreatic duct and the common bile duct merge and this is a ampule of water and it opens in the second part of duodenum this is anatomy simple you everybody knows right so when you entered something here it can injure to the pancreas that is why pancreatitis is a titis is a complication you can injure the common bile duct right so uh, so this is infection is also polycystitis is also a complication sometimes you may perforate this common bile duct so perforation is also a complication so these are the three major complications pancreatitis this infection of the common bile duct cholangitis and this perforation that's it so this is you don't need to mug up you need to understand the basic how it works right so mr ercp is always better than mrcp right but for the diagnostic tools right if your sonograph is not conclusive you can first do the memo, uh, mrcp sorry because we do in our clinical practice we need to find out before entering the scope once we do mrcp and then we go for the ercp right but if you have classical history you have usg finding it is a clear cut case upfrontly you can go for the ercp because even after mrcp diagnosis you have to do uh, ercp you know, because without by usg uh, sorry usg or mrcp you cannot remove the stone to remove the stone you need to enter something and that is the scope right so this is again excellent picture i collected collected right so you can also go with this pictures as well so this is excellent gall bladder right this is a gall stone multiple gall stone this is a cystic duct this is a cystic duct right they have not mentioned here here right hepatic duct left hepatic duct common bile duct right so this is a common bile duct and this pancreas as i told you already this is pancreas right it is fat globule this is a pancreas and this is all green excellent like tree and tree branches this is green color is a pancreatic duct so common bile duct and pancreatic duct merge together this is right and this is a stone here right and this is a duodenum and just for your knowledge this is a second part of duodenum that's it so simple so how do they, they they enter the scope from the mouth goes up to the es esophagus stomach and duodenum and from here they enter the scope and remove the stone while you are maneuvering either may injure the common bile duct you may injure the pancreatic duct you may perforate these are the complications of ercp right so that you need to keep in mind preeti am i clear to you yes or no at least tell me yes or no yes sir i am clear sir sir i was a patient sorry sir i can't no, be able to reply sir i have a question yes please sir. now you ask me sir yeah sir uh, each and every ercp procedure uh, we have to do the peplectomy usually yes because it depends on the stone size right stone yes. size if it is negotiable it is a very small it, it's all things in millimeter it's not in centimeter you understand right yeah. so if you yes. can ac cannot access well or if you can not able to remove or stone is large and duct is small obviously na it's difficult to extract it right so in that case Sorry, you can do this thing if if a size is uh, bigger and we already done the peplectomy after that bleeding is the complication also can occur or otherwise bleeding we are doing all. anything absolutely absolutely bleeding is also as any procedure bleeding is a complication so this is what the thing is ercp is the best management as we discussed complication cholangitis as we told because we are dealing with common bile duct i give you an excellent picture right and understanding as well pancreatitis yes. and goldstone ileus sometime and bleeding as well obviously any procedure but it is it is a very small minor vessel so it it will heal by its own and usually uh, the clinician usually i mean just make sure that there is no active bleeding or there is no vascular major injury right so once everything is fine they uh, get the scope out right so this is what the thing and is so i explained everything here so no yes. need to go much in detail so i try to explain you properly uh, with the proper uh, this uh, figuratic uh, presentation right so this is second thing all pictures as so i love pictures honestly speaking i love pictures so on our website there are thousands of pictures 
because pictures brings the clarity if i can tell you just without showing this picture you may probably don't get oh very cystic duct where is right hepatic duct left hepatic duct how they unite where is pancreatic you understand so now you get mm. more clarity right you have clarity but you get little more clarity so i love pictures second questions now we will not ask to the preeti now next candidate steri sky appearance of lymph node biopsy seen in which of the following conditions or lymphoma right steri sky appearance steri sky so i will show you the steri sky what is steri sky as well right so steri sky appearance right so is seen in a follicular lymphoma diffuse large b cell lymphoma burkitt's lymphoma primary c and s lymphoma by mistake it's cnc but it's cns right and gastrointestinal stromal tumor so your time starts now you you think over it properly and then you try to answer this radhika would you like to debate on this yes sir wonderful your answer is correct perfect right so so answer is a burkitt's lymphoma so now radhika will discuss all the questions with you the, it's a at least 10 20 questions we'll solve in this one mcq we'll every every mcq means we we'll solve at least 10 questions right so in earlier question there are lots of questions we answered usg went to do mrcp went to do right then third is a ercp went to do what are the complication of ercp this all are the exam question but they ask in a different different way so don't get confused right so i'm trying to compile lot of things in one mcq so now tell me right what is a burkitt lymphoma or what you know give me two lines about burkitt lymphoma two lines whatever you know whatever is in your mind what is the common age of the burkitt's lymphoma how do they present how you diagnose how it prognostically important what you see under microscope in lymph node biopsy one you told steri sky appearance that is a lymph node biopsy so if lymph node biopsy you do in a in a this uh, this is steri sky appearance this is steri sky just for your knowledge this is steri sky so what is this steri sky right so this is what you can see is looks like a star this all star steri sky looking towards you steri sky right so this is a classical presentation or classical picture they may sometime ask you the uh, spot diagnosis or picture mcq steri sky picture found in which so they probably give you the this slide steri sky right so this this is the steri sky now tell me uh, what is a burkitt lymphoma radhika mm. so it's a type of uh, uh, lymphoma where you see different types of uh, cells in the uh, different types of cells in the lymph node and uh, that is why uh, some cells with uh, uh, foamy appearance that's why you get the uh, starry sky appearance it's usually Uh, seen in young age group uh, young age group which age group <coughs> young age group which age 5 to i'm not sure sir 5 to 15 i'm Fair not enough. sure They don't worry about anything my sister you just keep speaking this is learning platform so don't afraid if you talk more with me you will learn more fine so how, so how how usually you diagnose burkitt lymphoma if you suspect any burkitt lymphoma what is the main investigation or any lymphoma let's discuss right so again we need to know the three things right again we need to uh-huh. know the three things for any 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 scenarios as as we discuss our triad will never go away in any mcq any mcq three things if you don't know means you are not good in the uh, in the solving the mcq so when you get three things in any every mcq considered you are now getting towards mastering the mcqs so diagnosis is burkitt lymphoma you told burkitt lymphoma if you are suspecting any case burkitt lymphoma if i tell you how you investigate burkitt lymphoma or suspected case of burkitt lymphoma what would be the most important diagnostic point how you diagnose first lymph node biopsy but definitely uh, you can do with cd markers fine so so let's discuss first lymph node biopsy and cd markers cannot be done without lymph node biopsy right so extremely yeah. important this is a exam questions and lymph node biopsy uh, right so to be more specific in lymph node biopsy remember one word excisional lymph node biopsy excisional not incisional not in excisional means this is a man right this is a just cartoon if he has a neck node here right if you take one picture it is called true cut or you just take it one piece but this is the book excisional completely remove the whole lymph node excisional lymph node biopsy because you want to differentiate lymphoma other things never do a fnc so fnc is a wrong answer 
So this is exam question. Which one is the best? FNAC, true cut biopsy, excisional biopsy. In a suspected case of lymphoma, what is the best? Best is excisional, not incisional, not FNAC, right? It is it's a very common basic thing. Anyway, so we did it, right? We did it. So we did a excisional lymph node biopsy. In excisional lymph node biopsy, what you can see, doctor? What you can see, Radhika, in excisional lymph node biopsy in a suspected case of Burkitt lymphoma. These all are questions. Don't take it lightly because they may ask you this question. Just tell me yes or no. If you don't know, to say don't. I don't know. So we go ahead, little bit, just to save the time. So you do the lymph node know. biopsy, and in lymph node biopsy, what you can see under microscope? Starry sky appearance with foamy yeah, cells. Tell me, na, starry starry sky appearance. That is what it is written, na, clear cut starry sky appearance. Okay. So this starry sky appearance you see, and you diagnose that it is a Burkitt's lymphoma. Okay. So now you diagnose the Burkitt lymphoma. What would be the next thing? Once you diagnose the things, what will you do the next for this patient? Again, question. Sorry. Any anybody diagnose any patient as a cancer patient? What is the next step? Have you heard of the word staging? Cancer staging? Yes, yes or no? Yes. yes or no? Right. So staging. So tell me, Radhika, how you gonna do the staging for this patients of Burkitt lymphoma? You have a Burkitt lymphoma. You diagnose this, right? You see the sterile sky appearance. You did lymph node biopsy. You do ISC, immunohistochemistry. You confirm that, okay, sir, this is Burkitt lymphoma, 100%. I'm happy. Now, patient is asking you, sir, what is the stage of the disease? Patient's relative ask you, right? What is the stage of disease? So, how do you define the stage? How do you do the staging, right? It is stage 1 or stage 2 or stage 3 or stage 3. Is there any test like sonography, endoscopy, doing some chromosomal analysis, immunohistochemistry? What will you do for staging? Anyone, open for all. Yeah, one side or both sides. Sorry? One side or both sides of the neck. Uh, then above diaphragm or below diaphragm. Um, then it, whether it's involving extra lymphatic organs and whether there is distant metastasis. Four grades. So I'm asking about stage, not grade. Grade is different and stage is different. This is biggest mistake people are doing in medical field. Staging yeah. is is the radiology usually, and grading what you see under microscope. Say for example, right? It is very important. These all basic things. If you learn, then you love the medicine. So this is a normal cell. Say for example, this is normal cell, which you can see under the microscope. This is normal cell. This normal cell are now getting into the cancer, right? So, so say for example, this is a breast, right? So, this is a little change, little change. So, it is called grade one, little change, more change, grade two, grade three, very much change. It's even difficult, grade three, and grade four or grade 3, advanced stage of grade 3 is undifferentiated. You cannot differentiate. Now tell me, if I can tell you this is normal, and if I can tell you this cell, can you able to identify? Yes or no? Can you able to identify yes. this is the cell? Yes. Usually not. Usually not. Why? Because no. there are so much of changes in the cell evolving, right? And that is why this is called as a poorly differentiated or undifferentiated. Have you heard of this word in histology reporting if you have seen? Poorly differentiated or undifferentiated. Undifferentiated means you cannot differentiate from the things. You got it. So this is all what see under the microscope. And this is called as a grading. Right? Mm -hmm. So don't get confused about grading and staging. Now we will come to the staging now. So this is what staging. And this applies to the complete any anywhere you see the grade means this is the basic whole cancer head to to any cancer somebody is mentioning grading this is simplest definition just for your understanding i told you staging is what from where the where the cancer is created from the primary site so say for example cartoon you tell me dr radhika what would be the stage i will guide you everything this is a diaphragm 
This is yeah. right upper limb, left upper limb, right lower limb, head. This is neck area. So if the patient has a one lymph node in the neck, only one lymph mm -hmm. node in the neck, what is the stage? Stage one. Okay, so this is stage one. If I can tell you, there are two lymph nodes in the neck. What is the stage? Stage one. Uh, not sure, sir. Stage two. That, that is Stage how one to tell me about one. Okay, fine. There are two lymph nodes on one side, right, right level one cervical region. One is also there on the left side. What is this stage? Then, stage two. Then second. Okay, stage two. Stage two. Right? Fine. So I'm writing. If I can tell you that these two lymph nodes, these are there, and there is a one, this is aorta, abdominal aorta, and there are para aortic lymph nodes. What is this stage? What is this stage? They have a right cervical, left cervical, and para aortic. What is this stage? It's below the diaphragm. Stage three. Second. Stage three or stage two? Stage if two. I can say, if I can this say there is only one. one, if I can say there is only one lymph node, this is a one lymph node, only one lymph node. This is one lymph node hmm. on the right side of the neck. This is one lymph node and paraiotic. This is stage two or three or one. Sir, one cervical and uh, para aortic uh, uh, also. One, yeah. Yeah, one cervical then and paraiotic. Then uh, grade two. two. Stage two. Grade is microscopic. This is not yes, microscopic. Yes, stage, stage. stage two. If I can tell you, th this is not there. Paraiotic not there. It is on the bronchus, right bronchus, right carinal area. Here the lymph node. Cervical and carinal. That's it. This is the lymph node. What is the stage? First. Cervical, cervical, thoracic, and abdominal. So cervical and th abdominal, you told two. So what is two. only cervical and only thoracic lymph nodes are there? What is the stage? Stage one. So everyone should go and read the staging of lymphoma. It is not difficult, right? It is very, 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 very easy, right? So let me tell you once again. Right. So, so let me uh, draw the things once again. Right. So you better understand. So it is a simple, right. It is a simple, it is a very simple, but we never thought of, we never heard of it. Right. So this is a things. This is diaphragm, which separate the chest and abdomen. There is a one muscle. This is a muscular structure diaphragm. Right. So this is a diaphragm. So if there is a one lymph node, one lymph node or two lymph node in the same area, right? Cervical two, it is stage one, right? If it is in a two different area, like, like level two and supraclavicular. So this is not stage one. Now it's stage two. It changed the side, right? Neck and this is supraclavicular, right? So stage one is very early disease, right? Stage two, right? More than two. If it is not there, either chest, or abdomen, chest or abdomen. So cervical and chest two, cervical and abdomen two. Is that clear? If what, if it is a cervical, thoracic and abdominal, stage three, above diaphragm and below diaphragm, if the disease is there, even though it is not there in the neck, it is above diaphragm and below diaphragm. If the disease is there, it is stage three. And what is stage four? Stage four is extra lymphatic, extra lymphatic. It is gone. Lymphoma, lymphoma is a malignancy of lymphoid tissue. So if it is going out of the lymphoid tissue, example, liver, bone, bone marrow, brain, if it is going, it is advanced disease, stage 4 disease, that's it, right? It is not now limited to lymphatic system. It is in the extra lymphatic system and that is why it is a stage 4. So we see a lot of patients of lymphoma, those who present with a bone metastasis. So it's a stage 4 lymphoma. Right. So you need to know. So first and foremost thing is the diagnosis that, OK, this is a Burkitt lymphoma. And to know the stage, now the base test across the globe is a PET CT scan, especially for lymphoma. So we do the PET CT scan of the patient. And in PET CT scan, I will share some of my patient's report. 
or pet CT scan in our group. So you go and read it well, right? How the staging can be done. So they take one picture and they try to find out where is the lymph node. If it is above and below, and below, not or above and below diaphragm stage three, and it is out of the lymphatic organ stage four. If it is in a two different site, it is stage two. Either cervical thoracic, cervical abdominal, two different sites, stage two. And if it is limited to only one site, one lesion, one, whether it is only one cervical, one axillary, one mediastinal, one inguinal, right? This is stage one. That's it. Is that clear? Any confusion to anyone? Radhika, any confusion? <clears throat> no, sir. Any? Radhika? No, sir. No confusion. Clear now? Fine. Yes, sir. So now, now you did the diagnosis, right? Steris sky appearance. You did a PET scan. You diagnose that this patient has a stage 3 disease, right? So what is the next now? Diagnosis, staging, and what is the third thing now? What is the next step now you want to do for this patient? Confirming. Sorry? Confirming what? the diagnosis. How you want to confirm? Con you confirmed it, na? You did a lymph node biopsy, you did IHC, you did all CD marker and you confirmed it. So, diagnosis is the first step. 100% diagnosis is done. It is a Burkitt lymphoma. Then second step is PET CT scan. So, I'm, so this is how we write down the diagnosis. Burkitt lymphoma, stage 3. Hmm. Now, what you want to do for this patient? When you diagnose somebody and you state things in cancer, what is the next step? Treatment. 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 Wonderful. Treatment. Uh, simple. I mean, you diagnose something, right? <clears throat> now, after diagnosis, you need to do treatment. So, what would be the treatment, Radhika? What is the treatment of Burkitt lymphoma? Mm -hmm. well, um, Anyone? Open. We are 20 people in house. Anyone wants to comment on this? Chemotherapy. Chemotherapy, immunotherapy. Chemotherapy and immunotherapy. Can anyone tell me one name of chemotherapy? Um, Only one specific or not in general? <laughs> Ritu, uh, rituximab and the cyclophosphamide. Rituximab and cyclophosphamide. Okay, so rituximab is what? Immunotherapy, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, what? And where it acts? This all question. No? I am not uh, talking out of the syllabus. This is all question in exam. DHS. Hard or MOH. Yes. Rituximab is what? Anyone? Uh. <coughs> so those who don't know in the class, go and read the Rituximab. It is one of the wonder drugs for last 10 years in the market, which has a multiple indication in blood disease, in hematology, in immunology, in a chemotherapy unit, in a anemia, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, autoimmune ITP, lots of rheumatoid arthritis and multiple clinical trials. Excellent drug. Right? So it has the CD20 marker, CD anti, this is called anti-CD20 antibody, anti-CD20, which carries on the lymphocyte, so it binds and it stops the progression of the cancer cell. So just go and read it, right? We don't need to do PhD, but you must know being a doctor, right? So this is the chemotherapy is the main treatment. The, this, this Burkitt, if I can tell you the second question, in the same question, right? So I'm just deleting it. So far clear, everyone, Dr. Sama is all clear to you? Basic yeah. concepts and wonderful. So now the, the, if I can tell you the change in the question, right? So, so this question is done, right? Steri sky appearance is seen in the in the Burkitt's lymphoma any right so so these things are basics are basics what is the basic if any lymphoma any lymphoma forget about various subtype of lymphoma any lymphoma if somebody asks you what is the how you diagnose so excisional lymph node biopsy excisional lymph node biopsy without fear give this answer you are correct right and how you do the staging of the lymphoma fat it is can this is confirmed. Whatever the name of lymphoma they say, this is a same. You got it. So, so this is the basic thing. Treatment obviously changed, right? But these two things, excisional lymph node biopsy and PET CT scan are the same. Once you do the, depends on the diagnosis, then treatment may change. If you have malaria, different treatment. If you have tuberculosis, lymph node biopsy, different treatment. If you have lymphoma, different. But you can do the same staging. So, whenever you're suspecting lymphoma, 
your first initial investigation would be excisional lymph node biopsy, <coughs> that is exam, not FNSE, not true cut, not incisional, excisional, completely remove the lymph node. And staging is done usually by the PET scan. Those centers who have no PET scan facility, CT scan can be done. CT scan, neck, chest, abdomen, and pelvis. Right? So this is how it's done. Now you tell me, Dr. Radhika, that if I can change the answer, question number two, which of the following is the most aggressive lymphoma? Another question. Options are same. Which of the following is a, one of the most aggressive lymphoma? Aggressive means if you don't treat, patient will die fast. What offered? They die. You sludge. It's open for all. So your answer, I listen. Your answer, Radhika, is diffuse large B cell lymphoma, right? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Let's see what other experts are saying, telling because we have a lot of experts in the uh, this uh, platform. Anyone? Dr. Charu, would you like to comment on this? Sometime random guess may be correct. Dr. Murod Rustam. Any comment? Dr. Samin, Zainab, Yogapriya. Question comes in your exam. Which of the following lymphoma is the most aggressive lymphoma? These are the options. Diffuse large B cell. Diffuse large B. Fine. So this is absolutely wrong answer. Large B cell lymphoma is not among lymphoma. this list. We are talking about this list. Right. So again. In the Burkitt's lymphoma, Burkitt's lymphoma is a, one of the most aggressive lymphoma in our body, right? So, this is indolent lymphoma. This all are question. Uh, considered every my sentence is a one question. If the question change, which which of the following is the most indo, indolent lymphoma? Indolent lymphoma means slow-growing lymphoma. Answer is follicular, right? This is diffuse large B cell lymphoma. It is an aggressive lymphoma, aggressive lymphoma. And Burkitt lymphoma is extremely aggressive, very, very aggressive, I can say. Right? So, all three different answers. If they say, what is the indolent lymphoma? Same option. Answer is follicular. What is aggressive? Diffuse large. Most fatal or worst of all lymphoma, Burkitt's lymphoma. Right? So, this is how you have to answer. Right? The follicular lymphoma, diffuse large lymphoma, and Burkitt lymphoma. For all the three things, diagnosis by excisional lymph node biopsy, all three can be done staging by pad CT scan. It doesn't change. What will change? The treatment. That's it. Right? So, this is what various complex questions into the questions I try to discuss. Right? So, Burkitt lymphoma is one of the most aggressive lymphoma. We treated recently two or three patients in last six months. They usually present with the tumors or the mass in the abdomen or in the colon or intestinal region or ileocecal region. This is the, one of the most commonest site, right? Because I was reviewing the literature and that patient has a classical steri sky appearance, right? So what I do personally in my practice, I see the patients regularly uh, in a big number. Then I go home again, even at the end of the 20 years of oncology, I come. I see why this has a neck node, why we, what comes in the external lymph node biopsy, what comes in the IHC, what is the stage by pad CT scan, right? How is the prognosis of the patient? What is the treatment? What is the commonest site of Burkitt lymphoma? This is how I improve my knowledge, right? So it's not just the mugging up the things. You need to understand what exactly you are doing in a clinic with the patient, right? So this is Burkitt's lymphoma, endemic form present with a jaw lesion. This is again a common Right? Have you seen one picture in Love and Billy and some picture, the black boy with a jaw, jaw, big jaw, these things. I forget to post it here, but I will next time post it here. Right? Usually in African or African American, sporadic form present with a abdominal lesion. I told you so. One is a jaw, another is an abdominal, right? And it can be associated with HIV and EBV, that is Epstein Bar virus. Epstein Bar virus. You need to know the name. Epstein Bar HIV, you must be knowing human immune. Deficiency virus associated with the 814. This is an excellent high yield question. MCQ. What is the translocation or what is the, the, the genetic changes you can see? Right. So, MIC 
oncogen expression. What is the name of this thing? Trans T for translocation, 8 and 24. Steris looks appearance seen in the lymph node. So this is what the thing is, right? And uh, this is the basic thing, right? So as I told you, aggressive lymphoma, lymphoma, there are a lot of aggressive and non-aggressive. So aggressive is aggressive. That is how the name comes, indolent, or you can say non-aggressive. But the fancy name is indolent, non-aggressive, and aggressive. So aggressive lymphoma, diffuse large disease lymphoma is aggressive lymphoma, yes. And it is one of the most common aggressive. And uh, extra aggressive is a Burkitt's lymphoma, as I told you. And indolent lymphoma, so this carries 60% aggressive, 40% almost are non-aggressive in terms of the presentation. So this is what the statistic we see in our practice, right? And uh, follicular lymphoma, as I told you, indolent. So they are, so somebody diagnosed follicular lymphoma in 2024. They usually live for 5 years, 10 years, right? And initial stage without any treatment, no treatment. If patient is asymptomatic and follicular lymphoma diagnosis, you just follow up them 3 to 6 monthly follow up. And they live 10 years. So in indolent lymphoma. 10 years means 20, 24, they diagnose and they live beyond 20, 34, 10 years or more, more than 10 years. Because it is a non-aggressive. What happens in the diffuse large B sample or lymphoma? 2024, they diagnose. If you don't do anything in one year, 2025, they die. And this is the aggressive lymphoma. So either bone marrow failure or infection, organ infiltration, lots of complications, right? So this is how we do, right? And this is classically the steady sky appearance. You can see I compiled all the four slides here. You know, one, uh, these things. So this is a reed Stunbuck cell. So how yeah. you differentiate between Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma? Answer is RSL, yeah. reed Stunbuck cell. What is the reed Stunbuck cell? So if you cut the lymph node, oh. this is a lymph node. If you cut the lymph node, you can see all eye. Have you seen the all bird all? Yes. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. This is all. This is all. This is reed Stunbuck cell, RSL, reed Stunbuck cell. And this is classical, you see. This is, they are the same identical together, right? This is all eye. That's it, simple, right? So you see the all eye. Right. <clears throat> uh, so if it is present, it is Hodgkin's lymphoma. If it is absent, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. This is general classification. And this all are we discussing is a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Right. Reed Sternberg is in Hodgkin's lymphoma. And rest of the this three things. Is, so this is follicular. This is indolent lymphoma. Right. Aggressive. And most aggressive is this Terry Sky. Right. This is Burkitt's lymphoma. Most aggressive. Right and diffuse large lymphoma diffuse. Right, this is not diffuse. So their cells are so, I mean, uh, close. This is diffuse large lymphoma, and this is all. This is B lymphoma. This is B cell lymphoma. This is B cell because in lymphoma there are two lymphoma: B cell lymphoma and T cell lymphoma. Ninety percent of them are B cell. Very rarely you say get the T cell. So this all origins is the B cell. Right. So this is what the picture is. Right. So uh, you need to keep in mind. Right. So they may sometimes ask you this slide. So I, that is why I intentionally compiled your file and try to make it under one roof. So you better get the understanding. And I'll share this PowerPoint on uh, YouTube form. So you can later on review the whole video after our class. Third questions. You know, any questions so far? I mean, I just try to compile all important things. There are I mean, don't take it otherwise, but I can speak on lymphoma for whole day, 9 to 5, I can speak one by one. But we don't need it at GP level. We're just trying to understand what is the basic things, how it goes, how you diagnose, how you investigate, how you treat, how you stage, what are the appearance, right? So, another question, let me get that one question as well, uh, which is very commonly asked in exam for Hodgkin's lymphoma. So, Hodgkin's lymphoma diagnosis, again, excisional lymph node biopsy excisional lymph node for Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's. Staging is done. Staging is done with the pad CT scan, right? And various histology. What are the his various histology in uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma? Can anyone tell me for various histology? If you cut the lymph node, then four. Various histology. So nodular sclerosis, nodular sclerosis, mixed cellularity, mixed cellularity, Lymphocyte predominant yeah. and lymphocyte, lymphocyte depleted. Now, 
So this one question of Hodgkin's lymphoma, how you diagnose, how you stay second. This all four questions, so two and four, six question, seven question. Amongst this all various histology, what is the most common? Nodular. So nodular sclerosis is the most common. Second most common is a mixed cellularity. Which is the best prognosis amongst all four histology? Best is a lymphocyte. Predominant is the best prognosis. Which lymphoma amongst Hodgkin's lymphoma histology is the worst prognosis? Then lymphocyte depleted is the worst prognosis. So 10 questions. This is all 10 questions. This is what you need to know. That's it. You don't need to do PhD on Hodgkin's lymphoma, but this is all high yield. They maybe give long, long, long story and they ask in the last line, amongst which histology has a worst prognosis? Lymphocyte depleted. That's it or whatever right so this is all in book but i try to compile it so there are a lot of questions on lymphoma but this all they ask very frequently in the exam so let's jump to the next question those still who have a confusion in lymphoma go open up the book it is excellent if you have any queries get back to me directly don't worry don't hesitate to call me right so i will guide my level list right so this is what the thing is now third questions in front of your screen a five-year-old man with a history of diabetes, hypertension comes to the ED, that is emergency department, with crushing substernal chest pain that radiates to the left arm. The pain has been on and off for several hours with the last episode being 30 minutes in duration. He has had chest pain on exertion before, but now first time it developed at rest, EKG is normal or second name is ECG, electrocardiogram, EKG or ECG same is normal. Aspirin, clopidogrel, metoprolol and statin has been given to the patient. Troponin levels are elevated. Which of the following is most likely to benefit this patient? So you have a, again, so again you need to stretch your mind and try to gather the three things. Our triad. Every question triad is there. So in this question, those who are discussing with me, I want first the diagnosis. What is the exact diagnosis? To confirm the diagnosis, how you investigated this patient, and the third thing is the treatment. We need only three things in every MCQ. This trad I created my own. Yeah. So now tell me. Now your house is open for discussion. Take your time. Ten minute. Uh, ten second. Twenty seconds. Charu, why it is a diltia zem, and what is a diltia zem? Charu, if you can speak, I would be glad. over it all no, i'm not in hurry at all so, so first give me the diagnosis without diagnosis in any mcq if you don't uh, i mean cultivate this practice the way i'm teaching you it's very difficult because sometimes they ask diagnosis sometimes they ask investigation sometimes they ask treatment they are not asking as per what i'm teaching you that is i'm teaching you everything so whatever comes you can answer <laughs> Otherwise, everything is on website. This is absolutely from website. No MCQ is out from out of website. 100% from our website only. But I'm just trying to pick up the very high yield points. So in one question, I can explain you 10 questions. So I'm not uh, very happy that nobody answered so far. Yes, Manjit Singh. Now we discuss. Your answer is wrong, but we discuss. Uh -huh. Yes. Am I? Manjit Singh, open up. Yeah. Let me discuss with Manjit Singh. Yes. Are you in a position to discuss with me or in the clinic seeing patient? No, no, sir. I am free now. You can discuss with me, right? So now, first mm -hmm. of all, step by step, go with me. It is a lots of learning and your complete coronary things will be clear today. So what mm -hmm. do you think? What is the diagnosis? If you want to read questions again, you read it. I'm not in a hurry. We are going conceptualize. Sir, I, am, I am in favor of uh, MI, yeah. myocardial infection. By one. Let's see. So now MI. Troponin level is elevated and uh, so we'll go one chest by one. pain. So is, yes. So, so your diagnosis is MI. Just answer my yeah. question so you everybody yes, will yes. learn the things. Now tell me which MI. There are two MI. No? STEMI. STE, there is a MI. MI. Non STEMI, there is a MI, right? Yes. So MI same. STEMI or non STEMI. Right, so this is which STEMI. Everything is in scenario. Non, if you read it, non STEMI. Chalo, okay, wonderful. This is non STEMI. Exactly. Now, third question: Why not? Why not STEMI? And why it is non STEMI? Third question. 
because at rest it's not a uh, occurring occurring only on I exertion forget about uh, what happens at rest right the mm -hmm. mi just learning purpose of for everyone mi is a absolutely a diagnosis of ecg yes whether it is at rest after food before food morning afternoon evening weight lifting non weight lifting mm -hmm. tension no tension mm -hmm. slept well not slept well forget mm -hmm. about all the history am i when you want to diagnose you look at the ecg so forget about all rest this is all to confuse you and just let me tell you now he developed ECG that normal well. no no at rest evident first yeah. time it has developed at rest so earlier it was not at rest now rest also developed yeah. that, so if it is so say for example somebody say i have chest pain with rest i have chest pain i am not doing re right even i am at rest i have a chest pain even i am not at rest i have chest pain in both the condition i would like to rule out mi so history is misleading take home message mm -hmm. history is misleading you understand you listen to the patient right but if somebody say when i run fast when i do the jogging in morning i chest pain then it is mi it is not like that and when it is rest, diabetic the patient doesn't develop pain what do you do yeah. tell me Diabetic patient develops silent MI, ECG. silent MI without any pain they may die. Cardiac arrest, yeah. ventricular fibrillation they die in the bed. We have heard the many cases in India. Night, he was fine. Gentleman was walking, talking. He was moving around. He went for the evening walk, but he did not wake up. What happened? He was fine in the night. What silent happened day. in the morning? He did not have any pain. He is a diabetic patient, and he had acute silent MI in the night, two o'clock. He is flat now. Is that clear? Yes or no? so now yes. second question so you suspected again let's go back to the basic though we discuss five ten questions i'm happy but i don't want to go without concept because if you understand you can answer 100 questions of acute coronary syndrome 100 different mm. different way they ask so this is suspected mi right by your mm. sense it is a non stemy right so now you are yes. guiding me why it is non stemy what's the understanding in your mind for non stemy when we say so if i see at the ecg and i can say stemi or non stemi yes or no if i yes. can see any ecg and can i able to get the idea sir this is stemi this sir this is non stemi yes or no yes yes, yes. in ecg we can yes. stemi simple so third thing is in ecg anywhere once you suspected any mi first and foremost investigation is a ecg and hmm. ecg you have to see only one thing stemi I mean, ST elevation, ST elevation. elevation present order. or absent? Present or absent? If it is present, it is STEMI. If it is absent, it is non-STEMI. That's it. And they have clear cut mention here. EKG is no. normal. It will be no. normal. So there are three entities. There are three entity in non-STEMI. Three entity in non-STEMI in terms of ECG. I'm talking about ECG. First is in initial stage. It could be normal. Second thing is a ST depression. Where here the elevation. stem is elevation here the st depression not elevation depression opposite to elevation depression and third presentation is t inversion t inversion i request everyone to see one video of dr medi on our youtube channel excellently explained this all ecg so i'm not going much detail in ecg because it's a separate lecture of ecg so i hope lots of students are confusing in uh, uh, confusion in stemi non stemi atrial fibrillation ventricular fibrillation flutter first degree second degree third i request everyone it's a free access to everyone so go on our uh, youtube channel medical mcq for all look for the dr medi and look for the ecg lecture you will get very easily there is a index is there so you find out and see it your 99% query will be solved so she is a brilliant speaker on ecg right <clears throat> so so now this is normal is what wo normal fall dr manjit in which category stemi or non stemi sir it's non stemi exactly so this yeah. is clear so, so now so what is clear so far by our discussion this scenario so let me draw the point diagnosis is likely mi yeah. in mi we concluded non stemi non stemi that is what more important why we concluded because ecg is normal if they say there is a st depression then it is non stemi if they say t mm -hmm. inversion it mm -hmm. is a non stemi so any of this one is a non stemi and and stemi is what there is st elevation simple elevation 
that is how it names comes na stemic hmm. how it comes s t e m i how is come s t elevation myocardial infarction simple and if you add the word non stemi non st welded no st elevation myocardial infarction simple no need to mug up na so here there is no st elevation here st elevation simple so far clear great we yes, go sir. ahead right now what could be the right what could be the treatment now if you want to treat this non stemi patient how you treat forget about mcu if non stemi patient i'll give you scenario chest pain patient comes to you he is suspected he is hypertensive he is diabetic he has obesity and smoke or risk factor is there patient has chest pain you did a ecg ecg is normal but enzymes are elevated troponin is positive means there is a myocardial infarction so if my so enzyme positive and normal ecg it is non stemi right if ecg st elevation and enzyme present and it is stemi that's it simple no need to mug up so now you have ecg normal enzymes present you diagnose this is non stemi acute myocardial infarction what is the initial treatment what is the best treatment tell me these are the two exam question what is the initial treatment non stemi comes to you in er you diagnosed in 5 minutes chest pain ecg enzymes all come in 5 10 minutes now it's non stemi what do you do the next was manjit singh sir aspirin and okay, so I, i'll write down okay i write down whatever you speak i write down so aspirin and clopidogrel right what is the dose of both the drug it is exam Sir, question aspirin. usually they don't ask but this is life saving so they ask aspirin 150 mg how much 150 150 plus 7 फोर This is how we I had given to few patients when I was in residency. Anyway, so three twenty five is the dose. Clopidogrel, how much is the dose? Seventy five. Go and read it. Right. So seventy five to one fifty. Higher the better because this is yes. a dying emergency. So this is the dose. Anyway, they won't ask usually the dose, but these two drugs are life saving, so you must know. Okay, fine. So let's move little. So you had given the aspirin to the patient of non STEMI. you have given the clopidogrel to the patient of non stemi what else you do this two is enough or you want to do more things statins statins okay second is a yeah. statin wonderful so this is another answer we got it from the house statin what else i had given aspirin clopidogrel and statin anything else anybody wants to give beta block whole house beta blocker why you want to give beta blocker let's discuss this is all question i mean i think we finished up with the cardiology only today patient why is hypertensive patient is hypertensive so the, so to control the hypertension we are giving the beta blocker or to and, uh, have something more in the uh, i mean uh, tachycardia tachycardia may be is there mm. So is the tachycardia in the scenario? Let's go back to that. No, no, in EKG scenario is not normal. So EKG is normal means if the, there is a tachycardia, then even EKG or ECG also shows tachycardia, sinus shows tachycardia, tachycardia. supraventricular yeah. tachycardia. This is all ECG finding. So ECG is normal means pulse is normal, rhythm normal, rate normal, everything normal. So there is no tachycardia. Why we are giving the beta blocker to the patient? Everyone go and read it. Open up the chapter and read it. If I tell you everything, you won't do any exercise. so let me finish it off now so any suspected mi so this is a acute coronary syndrome suspected we concluded this is a non stemi right and once we confirm the non stemi there is a pre hospital care pre hospital some and most of the mi is develop at home right not in the hospital how many of you have seen the patient right who is admitted and develop mi how many patient anyone na you must have seen na 
very few and how many patient you have seen that they came to the emergency room with mi lots of yes or no at least i want your participation yes or no yes right so 90% plus patient comes from home to the emergency room and then they diagnose as acute mi they are admitted for pneumonia in hospital for 15 days and now develop mi very rare go and check your statistic <clears throat> so pre hospital <coughs> care means what when the patient at home and reaching to the home to hospital there must be some distance 5 minute 10 minute 30 minute and even more in some time when i was practicing in oman myself in 20 12 13 and 15 i shifted many patient from my hospital to the nearby uh, setup because it was initially 15 years back small clinic no right so what we do pre hospital care before reaching to the hospital there is a one called as a mona that is the name in our india mona is a name of girl m for morphine morphine oxygen o for oxygen n for nitrate or glycerin nitrate and a for aspirin so i give the mona to the patient right if my hospital say for example my hospital is a big shot hospital in dubai example everything is available then how i manage this patient see the management change this is what they ask so this is 100% for all mi whether it is stemi or non stemi so you cannot bypass mona this is in non stemi this is in stemi both the condition you give pre hospital care or this is the mona you have given now if your hospital is a big shot hospital everything is there immediately i go for pci this is answer pci primary coronary intervention primary coronary intervention right usually within 12 hours of chest pain i'll start this they ask if within why if the some patient present after 2 days are you going to do pci not a good answer is that clear so earlier the better so this is the golden time where you can do it pci pci is basically simple another name people knows as a cag coronary angiography by doing the coronary angiography you try to find out how much vessels are blocked one vessel block two vessel block three vessel block this is mcq all mcq whatever i am speaking each and every word is a golden word is an mcq right because i know for last 12 years coaching the people what they ask that is why i am giving 10 question in one question so this is one mcq what will you give sometimes they tell you morphine and oxygen is given what else you give morphine oxygen and nitrates given what else you give remaining is aspirin so multiple question but if you understand the concept you can answer any question so now pci right angiography right if it is a one block the what will you the management another question angioplasty single vessel we called as a single vessel disease or single vessel angioplasty if two vessel it we called as a double vessel disease or double vessel angioplasty and if it is three then triple vessel disease and we advise the cabg cabbage coronary artery bypass grafting so i see the how the management change one and two block you probably go for angioplasty but three block cabg and another indication of cabg is a left main coronary artery occlusion left main coronary artery occlusion so again another question this is heart right and this is aorta and there is a right coronary artery 70% of blood supply to the heart from the left 70% almost to 80 75 and left so main to left this is called as a left main let me change the color this is called as a left main this is left main left main lmca lmca left main coronary artery then down it becomes left anterior descending artery and then it supplies here different different part of the ventricle right so this is called as a circumflex circumflex and right coronary artery applies, applies 20 to 30% of the blood right and it up and it supplies to the posterior wall and inferior wall of the heart this supply anterior wall lateral wall and uh, mainly the left ventricle this is how it goes so if you have a one vessel right coronary artery block or rca right coronary artery block you do the single vessel angioplasty if you have right coronary and if you have one circumflex or left anterior descending two block you do one stent here one stent here 
But if you have more than two or three, then it's better to bypass or left main coronary. Here you block, you cannot put a stent. Absolutely, you have to bypass. That's it. So this is what the management. So first treatment of non stemi first is a MONA. Second is a PCI. Right. So this is how we have to say, for example, here a hospital is in the very much very, very in a village area. And one patient comes to you with the non stemi You have ECG, right, as an emergency measure, chest pain. So you diagnose non stemi After diagnosing non stemi you had given the MONA. But the the PCI is the best, the best across the globe, the best. But the best is 10 hours away from your place, 10 hours. Even if you go by road, 10 hours. Even if you go by flight, it, it takes 2 to 3 hours. Or air ambulance is not feasible everywhere, every center. So if you go by road 10 hours, then in case what you do, don't worry. Instead of PCI, you go for thrombolytic. This is M STEMI. Huh? This is not, I mean, I'm discussing non STEMI, right? So, so PCI is the best and you do the angiography, right? This is MI I'm telling you, sorry, STEMI. Management will change in STEMI and non-STEMI. So non-STEMI and STEMI, MONA is the same. MONA is the same for both. Right. What I explained to you for STEMI, PCI is first. If PCI is not available, second is a third step is thrombolytic. It could be streptokinase, ultiplase, whatever you use. Right. If you have no facility for PCI, then you go for thrombolytic. Right. This is a STEMI, non STEMI treatment. First, you give the MONA. Right. And second, second, what you do? Anyone? Second, what you do? Second, what you do in non STEMI? Here the answer change. Here the low molecular weight heparin or heparin is the answer. Right? Because, because, right? In a STEMI, STEMI is 100% block. This is a coronary artery, 100% plaque, 100%. Atherosclerosis, plaque. So there is no blood growing from this end to this end. And this is muscle of the heart. So they die and that is called myocardial infarctions because of clot. So this clot is 100%. It is STEMI. Non-STEMI. Non still there is a flow. Still there is a flow. 100%. This is partial occlusion. So still blood supply is going to the muscle of the heart. Non-STEMI. What do you think? Which is more dangerous? 100% block STEMI or non-STEMI? Better prognosis. Mm -hmm. Anyone? If you have one patient in emergency who has a STEMI and one another patient at the same time comes to you in your emergency, it's non-STEMI. Which patient you handle the first? Of course, STEMI. STEMI, 100% STEMI. Why? Because it's 100% block. If you don't do, within five minutes, this patient will go into the ventricular flutter fibrillation, right? And ventricular fibrillation is die, almost die, right? Ventricular fibrillation means heart is not pumping. He die within five minutes or less than five minutes. I seen plenty full of patients comes in front of me. They suddenly no. collapse before I do even insert the Vigo or intravenous line. They collapse. We start code blue. We do pumping CPR. We do AD. We do everything, but unfortunately, many a times they cannot revive. Right, so it's a dying emergency. So non STEMI is less dangerous than STEMI. This is again a question, right? So this is what the thing is. This case is of non-STEMI because ECG is normal, chest pain, increased enzymes, and normal ECG indicates it is non-STEMI. LMWH, low molecular weight heparin, is the only choice that has been shown to produce lower mortality. Mortality means death. So by thrombolytic, do not lower the mortality. So in non-STEMI, if you give the thrombolytic, it will not change the prognosis. There is the same number of people will die the way they die in a low molecular weight. So there is no additional mortality advantage. It is clearly proven, right? So that is why thrombolytic is not given in this patient, right? Unless, unless there is a ST elevation and new LBBB, lab bundle branch block, right? So in only non-STEMI, right? What's your management? First is Mona, morphine, oxygen, nitrate, aspirin, low molecular weight, heparin. And once you give the low molecular heparin, then you go do the angioplasty and try to find out how many blocks. Otherwise, this patient, if you don't do the angioplasty and solve the problem, 
again after three months he present with a non stemmy another non stemmy new non stemmy right so again you treat it's not good idea so first give the mona right so what is the difference between this and this non stemmy mona here right in a stemmy also mona so mona is same can you see this picture it is excellently one liner slide i make it non stemmy i written here low molecular weight heparin that is the answer and then you do the angioplasty and here the change is little in STEMI, first MONA, directly go for the PCI if your hospital has facility. If PCI is not available in your hospital, then go for the thrombolytics. And more MONA consists with this. That's it. So this is what the thing is. There are hundreds of questions related with this, right? But this is the absolutely basic thing which you should know. Manjit Singh. Manjit Singh. Are you with me or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any confusion, question, doubt? No, sir. Any question not related with this? Any acute MI related? Any questions? Please feel free to ask. Otherwise, I will go to the next questions. If you don't ask, means I take it granted that you understood well. You all are brilliant. You don't have any confusion and you won't make any mistake in the exam. So I will go further. Sir, if no, we don't is... have a, uh, enzyme level, then what to do? Enzyme How level is I understand. So, say for example, this patient has a chest pain. This yeah. patient has a ECG. This patient mm -hmm. has a normal ECG, right? But uh, the sometimes when early stages, the the ECG changes also take time, right? So, patient don't yeah. discharge the patient at home. Keep him under mm -hmm. observation for 12 hours. Fix the things but in your problem mind. Is that, when you, yes. But problem is that I am working in government setup. There is no ECG machine also. And uh, we can't uh, hold the patient for the 12 hour also. This then is the only OPD, OPD yeah. basis. No, I, under, I understand. So, in that case, you have to clear cut mention on your paper officially that patient is advised ECG and enzyme. ECG okay. and enzyme. Record should be there. Otherwise, yeah. somebody will come and blame you. You did not advise ECG and patient died at home. It's a big legal issue in any country, oh. not in India, any country. Yes. You understand? Yes. So, yes. whether patient is willing to do or not, it's patient's perspective. But being a doctor, we should advise. If patient, yes. somebody, some patient has a seizure, fits, convulsion, mm -hmm. you have to advise MRI. He is doing or not doing is his you have to do electrolytes. Exactly. Hypocalcemia yes. can cause it. Hyponatremia can cause it. Right? Hypoxia can cause it. But if patient is not yes. doing, it's his perspective. But you have to advise being a doctor. Right? So say yes. for example, excellent questions. I'll come to this, your question, that patient has a chest pain, patient has an ECG, and you don't have any facility of enzymes. Then what to do? Mm -hmm. Then in that case, two things can be done. Either you ship the patient where the facility is there, or two, you just keep the patient under observation, right? Within next two or three hours, he will 100% if it is cardiac patient, he will develop some changes in the ST, whether elevation or depression on inward. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Right? Got and it. irrespective of irrespective of enzyme, say for example, you have full fledged ST elevation, classical mm -hmm. history, risk factor, and 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 the and the uh, this uh, trop ti is a borderline. What you do? You treat as acute MI. You treat mm -hmm. it as acute MI. ECG is more reliable than other things, right? So ECG enzyme and history. Being a doctor, we are not relying on a one parameter. We need to compile complete questions: patient history, patient examinations, patient blood workup, patient X-ray, ECG, sonography, CT, MR, PET, blah blah, right? And then we have to come to one conclusion that, okay, this is acute non stemmy We had given the Mona. We don't have any further facility. We are giving thrombolytic. And then we send to the other hospital for PCI. That's it. This is what the Sir, after is giving, After giving Mona, uh, how, how much time a patient can survive so we can refer him to the higher center? As, if we don't have It depends further, from center it. to center and uh, geographically. Okay. But, but book says clear cut. There is a there is a twenty five percent reduction. This is absolutely one line written in the master of the board. Go and open it. I've read many times. So twenty five percent mm -hmm. reduction in the death by just giving the mona okay. or aspirin, mainly the aspirin. 
So even if you give the aspirin only, which mm -hmm. has no cost, no cost. Yes, yes, yes. Almost free drug. Yeah. Right. So this save twenty five percent of the patients in emergency room. So even if the suspected, say for example, if you have anything, you are sitting in a so much very bad village, no ECG, no enzyme, no blood work, yes. no CBC, nothing. And some patient comes yeah. to you and you feel this is by my experience, it is a classical acute coronary syndrome. Forget about yeah. stamina and stamina because how do you diagnose without ECG? Yeah. How do you diagnose without the enzymes, top T, I, C, K, M, B, blah, blah, right? In that case, yeah. even if you give aspirin, you are not doing crime. Let me tell you. Okay. If you are missing it, he will die probably. But if you are giving aspirin and there is no acute MI, it won't harm the patient. Yes. Aspirin okay. in India, people are taking for headaches for your knowledge. If somebody yes, has simple yes, headache, yes. they go and get the aspirin, anti-inflammatory. <laughs> so, yes, so sir. even if on a suspected case, if you are giving, you are you are correct. You are correct. But when you have all the things, you confirm and then give. And this is just two minutes. Na? Apply all yes, leads, sir. chest lead and limb lead and you take ECG. ECG mm. is out within one minute. right? And you see, oh, this is acute full blood stemming. Give more. That's it. Two minute job in hospital. But if you are out of the hospital, then, then it's a different story. But even with the very limited resources or no resources, giving Mona is not a harm. That's it. This is the ECG normal PQRST. See, this is ST elevation in MI picture B. Right. So this is a right. So this is normal ECG. This is a ST elevation. So this is see here ST elevation. Here the normal line is normal. There is no elevation. But here, this is T, Q, R, S, and T is elevated. S and T. So this is ST elevation. Here, ST depression. That is why it is a non stem. This is non stem. T inversion, non stem. ST elevation, stemming. So this is classical, you see. So just to get you the little idea, I try to catch one slide for you to understand well. That okay, fine. This is elevated, classical. This is non elevated, right? Or T inversion. That's it. So, nothing above, nothing above the line, right? ST elevation is all above line. Or you can remember my name, Munjal. So, ST elevation is, looks like Munjal. Mm -hmm. Many people get MI after seeing me. <laughs> so, <laughs> especially in the hospital. <laughs> Anyway, so this is what just the general thing is. Manjit, is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Again, go and read it. Acute coronary syndrome. Hun Many questions come from acute coronary syndrome. Hmm. Any doubt? Dr. Radhika, Preeti, Rustam, Nasreen, Onkar, Zainab, Yogpriya, Ishak, clear sir clear it's okay wonderful 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 you are very brilliant wonderful okay so no there are a lot of still uh this this a lot of questions related but i again try to i try to cover a lot of things in one mcq but just go and read it once again so a few questions are there right when the aspirin is contraindicated, when nitroglycerin in Mona is contraindicated, blah, blah. So there are a few questions. Go and open up our cardiology high yield. Important questions all are there. Next question. This is all variety. Let's let's little do the things. Uh, the, the bifurcation. First question is gastrointestinal system. Second question is an oncology question. Third question is a Third cardiology is question. And now the they have switched to the pediatric surgery. Right? So your knowledge will check overall. Otherwise, say, sir, my cardiology is very weak. You did not ask any pediatric question, gastroenter questions. So I compiled all. All different. A premature infant born at 28 weeks in respiratory distress with the grunting, nasal flaring, and, and the use of accessory muscles, bowel sounds are heard upon auscultation of the back and the chest x-ray shows air fluid level seen in the chest. Which of the following is most likely diagnosis? I Sir, diaphragmatic hernia. Diaphragmatic hernia. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
the bowel is out of the body, right? So you cannot see anything in the chest. So chest is okay. You understand? Yes. The problem is in the bowel. While in hiatal yeah. hernia, it's something from of... abdomen, uh, abdomen to chest going. That is why. So in in a gastrochesis, you cannot see the respiratory distress. In gastrochesis, you cannot hear the sounds on the back, yeah. right? You cannot see the air fluid level in the X X-ray, right? So it is excluded. Hiatal hernia. Hydrocele also. Right. Hydrocele, hydrocele also excluded. Hydrocele excluded. What is hydrocele? What is hydrocele? Sir, you must know each and everything. I, they may ask. Yes, tell collection me. of collection of uh, fluid in the scrotal sac. Okay, wonderful. So that is hydro. So scrotal sac is all the way down. There is nothing yeah. to do with the chest, and it won't go or something up from the scrotal out of scrotal cavity. There is nothing. So that is gone, right? Fourth thing is yes, hiatal sir. hernia. Hiatal hernia is the part of the uh, stomach is coming uh, in the chest through the uh, is uh, from the foramen where uh, esophagus is going down. Okay, fine. So part of uh, parts of uh, stomach is going up, not uh, not the bowel. These both hernias are little close, right? Little close. Yes. So what changes from hiatal hernia to diaphragmatic hernia? Sir, in diaphragmatic hernia, bowel uh, loop will go up, but uh, in uh, hiatal hernia, only part of the stomach going up. No respiratory changes. Maybe we will have gird in hiatal hernia. Yes. Okay. The respiratory is... distress is not there. Okay. And what is omphalocin? Omphalocin is, is enough. Uh, sir, uh, this is umbilical stump is infected. No. Pussy discharge from the no. Uh, no. umbilicus. No. It's accumulation water and uh, umbilical. Okay. I see the patient Fine. opening. Fine. So let's now discuss the answer here. You had given the clear cut, very nice answer. So this is five pictures I collected for you. Right, I did a lot of exercise for this PowerPoint. So you can see this is a chest. You see the multiple fluid, air fluid level here. Everything you can see in the chest, right? So this is a diaphragmatic hernia. This is gastrochesis. You can see completely the intestine is outside the cavity, mm -hmm. right? Protruding intestine, protruding intestine. So intestine are pro because of the defect in the anti-abdominal, they are going out. This is gastrochesis. This is normal it's testis. Before birth? Is... Sorry? It's before birth also? No, very rarely. Very rarely. Right? But it is usually premature child. They usually present in a... presented with a premature birth. They present with the gastrochesis. Normal testis. There is a no fluid in the scrotal sac. This all blue is fluid. This is scrotal sac. So this is hydrocele. Two more pictures. Hiatal hernia. I take all pictures for you to understand. Hiatal hernia. This is normal. So this is normal esophagus. Right. This is a diaphragm. Right and left side. And this is stomach. So nothing coming up from down to up. Here you can see sliding. Sliding means part of the stomach is sliding through the esophagus. Right, so this is a hiatal hernia, all hiatal hernia. This is called sliding, and this is called paraesophageal because it is not going into the esophagus, it is going parallelly to esophagus. That is why it is called paraesophageal. If it is going through the esophagus, it is called sliding, but both are the hiatal hernia. Right, so here you can see everything in here. You cannot see fluid level here, you cannot auscultate something here. It's normal. Is that clear? Yes, and this is the Omphalocin, abdominal visra herniating into the base of the umbilicus. Like. Omphalocin, omphalocin, right? So, if intestine is, is a gastrochesis, this is visra. The word is visra, not intestine, visra. Is that clear? Right? So, this is all excellent for our clarity, concept clarity. This is all concept clarity, right? We heard a hundred times hiatal hernia, hiatal hernia, but we never know what is hiatal hernia. So this is hiatal hernia, right? This is a diaphragmatic hernia, right? So you need to know the clear concept. What is hydrocele? So I try to evaluate all five, right? Hiatal, uh, this uh, 
डायफ्रेगमेटिक हर्निया गैस्ट्रोचिस हाइड्रोसिल हाइटल हर्निया एंड ऑम्फेलोसिल सो आंसर इज अ डायफ्रेगमेटिक हर्निया ए हर्निया इन द डायफ्राम विल अलाउ फॉर Bowel content to move up in the chest and impair the ventilation, and that is why he has all blah blah things, right? So that's it. This is what the thing is, and I mean we took a lot of time, so I probably discuss last questions for today, and then we'll switch mm -hmm. to next. A patient who recently had a hip fracture, repair developed, with a sudden onset of shortness of breath, pulse is hundred and ten per minute, BP one twenty eight over seventy four, the chest is clear to auscultation. Chest X-ray is normal. EKG shows sinus tachycardia. ABG shows pH seven point four eight. You need to identify whether it is acidosis or alkalosis. PCO two is twenty eight. PO two is seventy five. What is the best next step in the management of this patient? Is it epixaban? Is it VQ scan? It is CT angiogram. Is it D dimer, lower extremity Doppler, or start intravenous panel? Again. You think over this answer. Meanwhile, I prepare my homework. I prepare my diagram. So I first need the diagnosis. How I investigate patient and what is the treatment. These three answers we need it. Um, and the embolism. I need one volunteer to discuss. This is the last questions for today. Any anybody wants to be a volunteer openly? Those who had not participated, huh? no Preeti, no Zainab, no Manjit, no Yogpriya. Different. Ah, uh, sir, fat embolism. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, who is this? Ah, uh, Preeti, sir. You you discuss. So I need another. We'll discuss. So what's your answer, Preeti? Ah, uh, fat embolism, sir. Fat embolism. Okay, let's see why it's fat embolism. Doctor Nasreen, any comment? Yes, Preeti. So I think you come up. No problem. I think people are reluctant to discuss. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, because. Uh, post hip fracture, uh, famous uh, hip fracture mainly they develop uh, uh, shortness of breath. Yes, sir. He has developed recently. Yes. Sudden onset of shortness of breath after hip fracture. What comes? Mm -hmm. Forget about this scenario. What comes in your mind first? Mm -hmm. Bleeding. Sudden I'm bleeding. Oh, oh, shortness no, no. of breath. Yeah, some some uh, embolic. Exactly, emboli, simple, na? Emboli. Yes, emboli doesn't develop in absence of risk factor, and biggest risk factor is a fracture. Second yes, is sir. immobilization. Third is a hypercoagulable state. Fourth is a obesity. Fifth is a long term lower limb or pelvic surgery with immobilization, underlying malignancy. These all are the risk factor for development of embolism. So he has a clear cut, strong risk factor, hip fracture. So patient, forget about scenario. This is, you think logically, if any patient comes with a hip fracture, right? I mean, hip fracture, lower limb fracture or abdominal or pelvic fracture. Well, thing, yes, sir. It's sudden ah. onset of breathlessness means what? Something wrong in the chest. Something ah. went up in the chest because they've done the surgery in lower limb. Why patient has breathlessness? But because of surgery or after surgery or any complications, something went up from the leg to the chest and that is embolus. Is that clear? Yes or no? Simple. Right? Yes, so sir. now this patient has a embolism. Right? So now hmm. how you differentiate between uh, this? Somebody told me fat embolism. So how do you get to know fat embolism? You can't see. Uh, sir, because the uh, post-extraction uh, post most commonly happens because the fat uh, 
it dislodges and moves into blood vessels and mostly happens fat embolism so uh, but otherwise other are uh, can be if it is a recent she they have been given that recent so it could be a cause or otherwise dvt uh, acute dvt it will take time to uh, dvt it will take time to develop so yeah. we sorry are dealing with the dvt now we are uh, i mean sorry yeah, the emboli emboli I mean, uh, Ah, uh, we are dealing with the embolia, so hip yeah. fracture. So, 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 do you know to prevent this uh, pulmonary embolism, is knee replacement surgeon or hip replacement surgeon or this surgeon giving any drug to the patient? Ah, uh, if Because already it's a risk an embolia, to everybody. Say, for example, deep. I mean, TKR. There are thousands and thousands of total knee replacement uh, daily happens in India, right? Yes, Every sir. day, hundreds of patients are underwent. For total knee replacement, or total knee replacement. So, okay. is this knee replacement surgeon or hip replacement surgeon? They give some medicine before surgery to prevent this pulmonary embolism complication, or no? Or you have no idea. A heparin they will give used to give to prevent the thrombosis. Uh, okay, but heparin uh, they will give. Perfect. So heparin give. Yeah, that is the answer. Low molecular weight heparin they usually start because I am sitting every day with a. Knee replacement surgeon in my lunch, and he's a close friend of mine. So they usually I discuss many times. So they usually give twelve hours before the low molecular weight heparin, and then mo low molecular weight they give right. And after surgery, after twelve hours or twenty four hours, they may continue until the patient is mobilized. Once the patient is mobilized, walking, right, then then there is no required because immobilization is a risk factor. Immobilization because knee replacement. Is there so patient will be in the same condition? He cannot move and repeatedly, frequently because recently joint is fixed artificial, right? So he has to keep it more immobilized for day or two, right? So it increases the risk, right? So they give heparin pre and post. Once patient gets stabilized, it's all done fine, right? So yes, this sir. is what the thing is. Yeah. So now, what amongst these options you want to give to this patient? Uh, we can give a. Uh... I mean, give or management, and they are asking the best management. So, what you manage the best? You do VQ scan, Epic Saban. You want to confirm with the CT pulmonary angiogram. You do D dimer. If D dimer is very high, you confirm that okay, no, no, sir, this is this pulmonary embolism. Or again, the you do the lower already... extremities. Oh, sir, the patient already developed the symptoms, so it is not uh, useful to start with the VQ scan or CT angio. Uh, better okay. to start with the treatment. It could be okay, like so uh, uh, abexaban, abexaban, and uh, or or the IV heparin. So, uh, I think best option will be ab uh, if. Uh, but there are so so VQ scan already patient is symptomatic. Patient has a classical history. Patient has everything. So VQ scan will take a time. Patient may die if you don't do anything. Right, CT angiogram is also a not feasible option. Right, D dimer. If it is positive, it is not diagnostic at all. Right, if it is negative, then it can rule out. But positive can be in anything, so it's not a good test. It's like a ESR. Being ESR, if ESR is high, what is the diagnosis? No diagnosis. It is high. It can be high in tuberculosis. It can be high in a multiple myeloma. It can be high in a chronic infection. It can be high in a autoimmune disease. So there is nothing. No diagnosis of high ESR. Like that, there is no diagnosis of high D D dimer, so you cannot reach up to the diagnosis. Lower limb extremities, whether you do it, there is a whether deep vein thrombosis in a calf or in a popliteal region is present or absent. Patient is acutely symptomatic, sudden onset, sudden onset, tachycardia, something wrong. Is that clear? So now yes. you stock up with these two things. This is how you have to exclude either epic saban, right? Or intravenous heparin. Now you choose between these two. This is the answer. Out the of patient these two, one stable. answer. Sorry. Patient is stable, sir. Still, they still they having symptom, but patient is stable. Uh, okay, patient sudden... is a stable. Yeah. Better mm. go with A, sir. Epic saban. Yes, sir. Why not heparin? My question is, uh, why not heparin? Yeah, heparin will dissolve only the freshly formed clots. It won't form, uh, dissolve the embolus. So. I don't feel uh, heparin is in, in here, so. Fine. Then what is epic saban? Uh, so, uh, DOAC. What is epic saban? DOAC. What is DOAC? 
for learning for other people. You know, I know, but there are 20 people in class, so we need to learn everything. Uh, what is yes, the DOSE, full form of DOSE? Uh, sir, it's an anticoagulant. So, AC for anticoagulant. Anti what is DO? Yes, sir. Direct oral anticoagulant. Direct oral anticoagulant. That is no Yes, sir. Right? We yes, also sir. in hematon ko we noak we also can newer newer oral anticoagulant noak and noak right direct oral and uh, new newer oral so earlier which drug was available in market warfarin only anticoagulant right for years and years everybody knows the warfarin but there are new drugs comes into the market when the case is clearly suggest there is a pulmonary embolus with sudden onset of shortness of breath, clear lungs, clear lungs with shortness of breath, number one diagnosis is P. If you have a, if you have a crepitation, then it could be pneumonia, simple, is that clear? If there is a reduced air entry with breathlessness, it could be a pneumothorax, simple, right? So pneumothorax, but there is a reduced air entry, right? Breathlessness. There is a reduced end, uh, right? Then there is a clear chest. So this is differentiated. Na? Shortness of breath plus normal x ray or normal air entry, it is pulmonary embolism. Shortness of breath plus crepitation, if you find, you may think of some fluid. Acute congestive heart failure or bronchiectasis or pneumonia. This is how you two three. Third, shortness of breath with reduced air entry, it is a Tension pneumothorax or pneumo. Is that clear? Yes or no? So, shortness of breath is there. But what matching the clinical scenario? Right? Lungs are clear. Lungs examination is normal. Because there is a nothing in the lung. Right? It is in the pulmonary vessel. Nothing in the lung. So, which artery supply to the vessel. Right? So, chest is clear. You can't see foreign sounds. Wrong chi, crepitation, foreign sounds. Because nothing in the lung. It is in the pulmonary vessel. And you are not auscultating pulmonary vessel, you are auscultating the airways. Is that clear? So, this is classical pulmonary embolism. The first thing to do after the chest x-ray is the blood gas. Blood gas is given already, right? To start the anticoagulation. Do not wait for VQ or ventilation perfusion scan. For spiral or is a fancy word, but you can say CT angiogram or CT pulmonary angiogram. So, you don't need short hip fracture, acute shortness of breath, chest x-ray clear, it's clear cut indication of pulmonary embolism. So do, don't go for any investigation. Even if you do CT NGO, pulmonary NGO, if you do, if you do VQ scan, if you do any fancy scan, eventually you have to give treatment. So in a strong clinical suspect, suspicious, start the treatment, don't waste the time. This is how it works and this is what they want in exam, right? So you start the treatment and this is DOAC as she told rightly direct oral anticoagulant drug, Debigatran, Rivorabexan, Apixaban uh, and lot more now newer drugs are coming into the market. Right? So this is the things how they act. This is very important. Right? So this is the clotting cascade I will later on teach you. Right? We are over time so just we are uh, so this is a clotting cascade. This is intrinsic pathway. This is extrinsic pathway and this is common pathway. So just one clue, right? This 10 factor in Roman word is right as a 10 or 10 A, right? So which drugs inhibit the 10 A activity where you get all X A? Can you see X A, X A, X A? So which drug where the X A comes means it inhibiting the 10 A activity? That's it, simple, which you doesn't know before that. Even I didn't know, but I did a lot of books. So somewhere somebody has written, wherever X comes, that means it acts on the factor 10. X means 10, Roman, right? This is 5. This is 10, Roman. So factor 10, if they inhibit 10 or X, it is so epic saban, endoxaban, rivora, Rivora Saban. So X A come means 10 A. No need to mug up. That is why I give any clue. So whatever the drugs comes with X A, they inhibit on the clotting. They ask in the exam. 
apixaban works and inhibit the which factor factor 8 9 10 or 2 answer is 10 is that clear and dabigatran that is also doac direct oral anticoagulant but it acts on the 2 it acts on the 2 that's it so this is what the thing is right so these are the drug how and where they acts exactly on the clotting cascade i want to teach you where the heparin works where the low molecular heparin works where warfarin will work probably in the next class and session so thank you very much everyone for joining me on the sunday hopefully i tried my level best to make this session very interesting i have lots more questions to discuss to today but probably we'll discuss in the next mock remaining and new fewer ones as well but i mean keeping the things in mind for the time frame we'll stop it here before i stop i want at least couple of feedback from the audience who attended first time or just genuine what you learned today or what is new learning for you so just one more minutes bear with me anyone anyone i would be glad any feedback yes any so no one learn nothing you all knows everything today Before no sir it, it was very excellent class and uh, i think so one and half hour how went we don't know time is running so fast in your class sir really it's appreciable and you are doing so hard work so thank you and uh, continue do it god bless you sir thank you very much brother thank, thank you, you very sir. much okay. sir thank you afri how was the much, learning sir. today how was the learning something new today very nice lecture sir wonderful thank you very much for your kind feedback so thank you all for joining i'll see you and catch you in the next lecture but read all the topics what i had given discussed and uh, we went bit in detail today but i think it's important rather than just mugging up the things we need to focus on the conceptualized learning right and training and uh, understanding so try to never ever miss stride diagnosis investigation that is a take home message from my side today from now onwards whenever you read any answer ask three questions to yourself what is the diagnosis of this scenario how you investigate how you treat i can guarantee you 200% you will pass 200% <laughs> anyway so thank, thank you, you very sir. much once again everyone for joining we'll see you in thank the next you, next lecture thanks all enjoy yourself thank you very much thank you thank you it was thank wonderful you. thank you very much